Welcome to Spotlight. I'm your show host, Barbara Raglan. And for this holiday season, we have Paul Cavallari. He's the principal of Sage Park Middle School, the only middle school in Windsor, and it's a huge school. So welcome to Spotlight, Paul Thank Cavallari. You. Nice to meet How you. How many students do you have there? Uh, currently, we have 800 students at Sage Park. Oh, I see. Okay. Is that... Um, has your population decreased or increased? Uh, our population has decreased. Within uh, the last five years, we had upwards of 1,200 yeah. kids in the school. And then as Windsor population has declined, so has ours. Oh, it has. Um, middle school, what grades are they? Uh, middle school in Windsor is grades six, seven, and eight. It's a transition obviously between the elementary schools which take you through fifth grade and then high school starting in grade nine. Yeah. Um, do you have a team approach to uh, working with your students? Um, do different teams work with different groups? Um, like the sixth grade, how many teams of teachers work with the sixth graders or is it just one team that works with sixth graders? Sure, I can explain the school structure to I you. I would like that. Um, we try to reduce the larger numbers to smaller numbers any way we can and we do that several ways. One way is each grade is a, a school within our larger school. So the sixth grade has its own uh, vice principal, guidance counselor and own set of teachers as does the seventh grade and the eighth grade. So once the kids come in our building, they go into their own space in the building and they stay within that space for all their academic classes. They really don't interchange with the other two grades, except when we have assemblies and as they enter and leave the school. Then within each grade, say the sixth grade as an example, you now have to say 275 kids as opposed to the whole school of 800. Then the 275 to 300 kids is broken into three separate teams. So each team has approximately 90 to 95 students. So we've taken it down yet one more segment, another third. So, and then within the team, there's generally five teachers of math, two language arts, science, and social studies. So then you take the 90 to 95 students and you break those out across five teachers and you have very uh, good class sizes for student learning. Do you have uh, the grades are on the same floor, like the sixth grade would be on one floor, the seventh grade on one floor, or are you, they intermingle through the school? Um, they're on, they're, each grade is, has its own separate location in the school. So the sixth grade has one floor on its own wing. Actually, right below it is the eighth grade, but there's no need for any interaction there. And the seventh grade academic classes are in a uh, different part of the building also. Uh, how long have you been the, the principal of Sage Park? Sure, I've, this is uh, the beginning of my 12th year at Sage Park as a principal. I started in the year 1999-2000. Uh, and what's your previous experience? Prior to that, I was actually vice principal at Windsor High for one year. And prior to that, I was a, a middle school principal in Plainville for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then prior to that, um, vice principals at a couple of different high schools, one being Plainville High, another one um, Middletown High. And I was a social studies teacher as I be began my career back in the 70s in uh, the Middletown Public Schools. Yeah, um, I think that, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but I'd like to say I think Sage Park is a well-oiled machine. Um, I can remember my granddaughter going on a trip to Canada, and so she says to me, I went up with her, and uh, I wanted to wait until the bus uh, left, and so she says, Grandma, you better sit back, you know, the benches in front of the school. Yes. And the ba get back there, she says, there's a lot of kids coming in here. <laughs> and I couldn't believe all the buses that I saw. And the thing that impressed me most about the school was the children got off the buses and came into the school in such an orderly fashion. And the staff was out, to, out there greeting mm -hmm. them, and they had a very good relationship with them. And, you know, like there's no rowdiness or anything. And it was just really, I was very, very impressed by that. 
Thank you. Yeah, I think well, it's we work a great place. We work really hard at that. Um, part of one of our objectives is to make sure that we know each child individually. And so we do that through breaking those down those larger numbers, as I already explained to you. Mm -hmm. And also, even we break the numbers down smaller. We do homerooms, which is how we begin our day. Okay. Um, we take a class of 24 and break them into two groups of 12. So children coming into school actually greet, are greeted by a teacher that only has just 12 students to start the day. Their objective is to you know, be, make those kids comfortable to have a good day. In addition, as you described, we really um, do our best to supervise students in all areas because if you don't have the right supervision, it could tend to kids doing some things that they really shouldn't be doing, but as long as they see an adult in an area, uh, they, they're, we were blessed with really good kids and outstanding teachers. So they know, and most kids make the right choices, which leads to a really positive school climate. And we really have a really strong school climate um, this year and in the recent past. You have a lot of different activities for your students. Certainly do. Uh, just to name, and that's part of one of my beliefs as a middle school educator. Kids, to be honest with you, don't always come to school to just for their academics. Obviously, that's difficult for some of them, and it's not always a motivation to come to school. But in addition to that, we try to provide uh, many other opportunities that might encourage kids to come to school, have them uh, link up with an adult, and then also, obviously, we want them to achieve academically. Some of our um, extra activities that I brought in during the course of my tenure, we have what's called enrichment clusters, which are teacher-led activities um, that they do several times a week after school. Uh, I was able to get a, a interscholastic program going, so we do have seven sports that our kids play against other middle schools in the surrounding area. We also have a really strong intramural program, so kids um, who are, do not make the, the interscholastic teams can no cutting. They, they are part of the intramural program. And we have a lot of homework help clubs after school. We do homework club in our cafeteria three days a week. And uh, upwards of 50 kids come in. I have a couple of teachers in there and several paras that help students with their homework. We're able to do all this because we have a late bus which comes one hour after school is out, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Mm -hmm. Since most of our kids are bused, it's really important to make sure that those that do stay after school have the transportation to get them home. Usually on any of our late bus days, we have uh, almost half of our student population after school, and it's mostly all in really good, positive activities. I noticed that uh, I can't, I think it was, a concert and then they had it was almost like an open house and uh, you went to different sections of uh, our clusters and they had uh, different kinds of activities that the children were involved in with the teachers and I thought that was really important I know when I was taking administrative courses one of the things when they talk about education they say that 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 sixth seventh and eighth grade it's like a step stop gap and uh, the philosophy is that these grades are there to keep the children out of the workforce for a few years because if they went from grade one through six and then went into high school, you know, they would have all the education they really need because you can't really, well, I'm not saying you can't, but you can't um, really emphasize you know the things that you need to do to get go, to go into the workforce in those middle grades so I think and uh, the philosophy is like those middle grades are for catch up and helping children mature and helping them get ready to go into high school and then into college and whatever so I'm not saying that middle schools are not necessary but they have a really good place in helping children mature so they can continue in a positive way. What is your philosophy on that? Sure. Um, middle, middle schools are, are critical. They're what we would call the transition years. Yes. Our job, one of our many jobs is 
helping the fifth graders come to our school. So it's a big change for uh, yeah. th those young adults, fifth to sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So we do everything we can to make them comfortable and uh, so to allow them to be good academic students. We created, um, we've had several schedule changes since I've been there, and, uh, but we, what we made sure with each change was that we built our schedule around the sixth grade needs. So as an example, the sixth graders have their, all of their academics yeah. the first part of the day. And at any grade level, that's the, the most crucial time. So we made sure that our youngest students get the best learning time. Um, and also in middle school, though, though the transition, it's difficult for kids because they're experiencing developmentally, their bodies, Definitely. their minds yes. are uh, experienced the most rap rapid growth and change other than when, from when they were born. Mm -hmm. So our staff uh, has been trained to deal with the social and emotional and physical yeah. changes while still pushing very hard the academics and striving for each student to be a better learner. And of course, then our other transition is eighth to ninth grade. So we work almost the whole eighth grade year, raising expectations for kids, requiring more of them, um, having them get ready mentally for the challenges that occur when you move to high school. Yes. And then we do many transition activities, visiting the high school, high school counselors coming to us, um, doing many of those sorts of activities so that when they do go to Windsor High School, they have the best opportunity to be successful. So that they, at, when they get to high school, they're ready to concentrate on an area of emphasis or uh, their algebra or their sciences or, you know, uh, physio physiology courses and things like that that they really need uh, when they get out of uh, high school. Correct. Um, so... It's an important time. Yes, ma'am. And do you think, I feel as though it's a difficult period for the students, and probably it takes a special kind of teacher and administrator to run a school like that, because children are going into puberty and whatever, and they have, not saying that they have a lot of behavioral problems, but they have a lot of emotional issues mm -hmm. too. How do you deal with that? Well, we're, we're trained in that. Um, middle school teachers, um, want to be at that age level for any number of reasons, and they all have their own reasons, but right, it's a special and unique time. Yes. I know personally that I've, I've had opportunities to be at the high school level on two or three other occasions, and I've consciously made a decision um, that I wanted to be a middle level educator. I like kids that give you challenges each and every day. With a middle school student, one day they could be perfect in the room, the next yeah. day something's, something's <laughs> occurred so either at home yeah. or in their personal life mm -hmm. and they respond differently. And that causes challenges for us as educators. But for me, it adds variety, excitement, and I myself enjoy being a middle school student uh, with the kids, whether it's dancing a little bit with them in the hallway or giving them a high five during lunch break or things like that. So they keep my energy and excitement level up. And, and that same with the teachers that work in our building. We enjoy doing and working at that age, with that age group. And um, this transition uh, part of their life, the middle school, do you have many instances of children dropping out of school that early? No, they're, just as a reminder, they're not able to drop out of school well, until they're 16. Okay. Uh, and we don't have uh, any 16-year-olds. We haven't had any 16-year-olds um, in our building. We work really hard to monitor their learning and their progress. So okay. after, um, after every quarter, and there are four quarters, four marking periods, mm -hmm. We meet with every student that, that is not being successful in any one of their classes. So if a child is failing, uh, myself, a vice principal, and a guidance counselor meet with them and we give them suggestions and directives of what they need, need to do to be successful. We also have some required after school programs called our summit program where we get parent agreement, but certain students are then required to stay after school two times a week to work on the areas that they're not being successful in the room. And we have other, other programs too to help kids be successful. We have many what are called intervention programs. Good. So if a, if a student's not reading at grade level, 
We have two or three different programs that students have to uh, be part of in addition to their regular academics mm -hmm. to help build their skills so that hopefully by the time they leave eighth grade, they are reading at grade level. And we have the same sort of programs for those students who are not meeting goal in mathematics. And any child that needs that kind of support receives it at our school. So how about your SEM uh, population? Do you have, you know, socially, emotionally, male adjusted? Do you have, how's that population? Many students or do you identify them quickly or were, kind of what you said, you tried to work with them. Mm -hmm. But I was also going to ask you about your other special education uh, population. Do you have many students that are part of your special education population? Um, yeah, we do have... Uh, a significant special education pro uh, population. There's approximately 120 students uh, okay. that have been identified. We don't do much of the identification. That there, wow. we receive them from the elementary schools. Okay. Usually, they've already been identified, and then we work to support them. We're really lucky, though, that all of those kids' needs. We're able to meet all the needs of those kids. We have a really strong um, special education staff. They also um, follow their students from grade to grade. So, as sixth grade special ed kids enter. They have a certain special ed teacher and then that teacher follows them for 7th and 8th grade. I we see. feel that this enhances the communication at home with the parent and guardian, plus it also uh, supports the student better. So we all, most of our special ed kids are very successful as they work through and many are, uh, don't need special ed services as they work through uh, the three years in our school. So they uh, are immersed and they integrate into the population of your student body. They can attend uh, some of them classes. All of them, all, all of them. them They're that. all in the least restrictive environment. There's no self-contained kind of program for regular ed or special yeah. ed. They're all mm -hmm. uh, fully integrated and being serviced as well as all the other kids. You know, on the other end, you didn't ask, but I want to make sure I'm sharing it. We have so many gifted and talented kids in our school, too. Uh, I'm lucky that I have two full-time, what we call our challenge teachers, our gifted and talented uh, teachers. We have more than 160 kids that get services from them. That's enhancing the regular classroom instruction. They get, they get pulled out to get more advanced math. Some kids go to the high school for geometry every right. day those eighth graders that are at that level, and they also get ad advanced language arts and reading skills by one of our two uh, teachers. We have a full-time language arts teacher in challenge, and we have a full-time mathematics teacher also. Do you enjoy your job? You sound like you do. <laughs> you seem like you do. Oh, I love it. You I got love it. energy. <laughs> no, that's right. Well, anytime I start talking about the school, I get yeah. excited because uh -huh. um, we, we work hard at being successful with the kids. We have a lot of uh, nice activities. In fact, you know, even today is going to be one of our holiday concerts. It's the seventh and eighth grade uh, instrumental concert. Our kids are outstanding in that area too. They've gone to festivals, both choral and instrumental, and won awards. Our teachers take kids on um, overnight trips. The seventh grade, as I'm sure you're aware, has gone to Cape Cod for a week. And I believe it's in its 38th or 39th year running. And that's a tremendous um, dedication on the part of the faculty because they're spending a full week's time away from their family with Windsor kids. But we believe it's a really positive, rewarding experience and our kids grow from participation in that. In eighth grade, we take our kids to um, uh, Washington, D.C. It used to be Philadelphia, but there again, it's an overnight trip yeah. and our staff coordinates it. And the students gain much by participation to actually see history besides just reading about it uh, in the classroom. Uh, do you have any ideas of, of how you'd like to make some changes or s talk about some of the changes that you've made since you've been there? Well, the changes, there's too many to list. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're excited about a lot of things, but most recently on the 2011 uh, Connecticut Mastery Test, our, our, my school uh, did the best it ever had on the state level testing. We yeah. saw really, we saw really good growth in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade on their scores in reading, writing, and mathematics from the prior year. So the students, the things that we're doing at school uh, through that 
testing indicate that they're working. In fact, yeah. in, um, in our sixth grade, our students at or above goal in writing were uh, above the state average. And right now there was no other uh, grade or subject in Windsor that's ever been above the state average. That's just the beginning because the goal is to be at or above state average in, in every grade on every test. Yeah. And we're starting, uh, that was the beginning of hitting that mark. So we're hopeful that that trend of improved student learning will continue. Mm -hmm. So that makes you feel good and your yes, staff. Very much so, yeah. very much so. It's a, it's a motivator because um, now you need to make sure that those same sorts of teaching strategies are done again with a new group of kids. And then I always tell the teachers that we have to find a way to do more for the kids. We can't ever be satisfied with what we've done in the past. One of my models is the road to success is always under construction. So we dare to try different things and to motivate and utilize different things. If we're not successful, at least we try. But a lot of times the new things that you try um, do seem to have a better impact. So uh, I advocate advocate trying new things. Um, how about your staff turnover? Do you have a lot of the same teachers you've had or new ones coming in? Um, within the last four years, there's been uh, very little staff turnover, and that leads to consistency, strong instructional practices, and good uh, collegial relationships within uh, the teaching staff, within their team, and within their grade, and within their school. We've only had uh, turnover based on teacher retirements. Okay. Uh, most everybody else is, is happy with where they are, happy with um, their colleagues in the school and want to stay and work with the kids of Windsor. So probably with your team approach, your end services would have a structure like improving whatever they're doing, instruction or um, you know new techniques in education. What are you doing for end service? So, um, well, our in-service actually uh, many times is delivered to the whole uh, teacher population if there's a specific yeah. strategy or trend. Um, however, most recently, because there's so much changing at the state level with uh, curriculum, we've broken out our professional development days by department. So each Very department, good. each department works within their department with a building administrator or a curriculum supervisor, mm -hmm. for example, science. And so the nine science teachers that I have in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade would, would work with a building administrator and the science supervisor and analyze the new state standards and then see what needs to be changed in our curriculum at our school in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade science to meet those standards. And then they have to go back into their lessons and make modifications so that what they're teaching uh, meets the expectations of the state through the new standards. So that's how we spend a lot of uh, our professional development time. And evidently it's working because your scores have increased and I think that's beautiful. Thank you. So I, you know, I have to congratulate you on that. Um, what are some of the things you like about your job? Well, before I mention that, I do want to say too that uh, Sage Park was one of the first schools that uh, went through a training of, called PBIS, which is Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. We went through that training last year. Now all the other schools in Windsor are going through it this year. Okay. So we were one year ahead, um, and we were happy about that. So with that comes the creation of a different, uh, an enhanced school climate. Our kids focus on what we call core values, honesty, yeah. uh, safety, respect, and responsibility and we talk about that all the time, we've found that you actually have to teach students certain behaviors because they don't always understand uh, how they should function in different areas. For example, before the assemblies, any assemblies that we do, we read about the proper procedure and protocol for students in a large group audience so that they understand that they don't get up during a performance so that they understand what's the right when is the right time to clap so that they understand and follow teacher direction. We found that as we work and teach the, the students um, these responsibilities and our expectations, they function much better. So our school climate, our rate of 
removal from class and suspensions is way, way down from other years. And it's because the kids are listening to what we're sharing with them and the teachers all support it across the whole school. And it's made for a much better um, school climate the last couple of years. And I think, you know, that's what uh, middle school is all about. And you're doing a wonderful job because these are the really, the learning, this is the learning process that children need. This is the behavior that they need to be taught. And it's a key time in their life, in their development, for them to learn. And a lot of times people uh, will say something negative about a child when really, or a student, when the student doesn't know any better, he hasn't been taught. And so you're teaching them and you're grooming them, which is part, to me, part of your duty as a, um, a middle school administrator and your staff. So I'm glad that your staff understands that and it seems like they enjoy mm -hmm. doing that and I think that's wonderful. Thank I you. Really, Thank really you. do. Another key element that's really been positive is uh, our connection with our parents. We have a really strong uh, PTO organization. As you probably know too, anytime we need to communicate with parents, we have a Every school has a system where we can phone into every one of our students' homes and let them know of important information, and that's been very successful. For example, just today, I, I've called every household through one phone call and let them know that our kids are, are bringing home their second quarter progress report and for every parent to look for it, because some kids might hide it. You know how kids yes, are. Yes. And to make sure they look for it, and then uh, keep the report and sign off on the envelope and send it back to school. So a technology like that that Windsor is very much on top of um, helps with parent community relationship. And because there is a good relationship there and there's really good budget support within the town of Windsor, we're able to stay right on the cutting edge of middle level um, school practices. And we feel really good about where we are. and We want to maintain that and improve it if we can. That's really, really great. Um, Mr. Cavalieri, I've enjoyed this conversation. Do you have any, since you have the audience of parents and students, do you have anything that you'd like to convey to them? Uh, only that um, uh, I believe that Sage Park is a really, really strong and outstanding middle-level school. I agree. We would welcome, um, we welcome any student that would like to be part of our population and we encourage all parents that maybe uh, aren't sure of whether they should send their child to our school or not to come by the school any day. We have an open door procedure. You don't need to make an appointment. You could just come in and walk around, visit a classroom if, if you'd like, and make your own decision about whether or not you'd like to have your son or daughter, granddaughter, grandson educated at our school. We'd love to uh, work with you and support you in anything that would advance them in the middle school years. I really um, think that it's a wonderful place, and I can say that from personal experience and being, and, and I've never seen you, but I've been in and out of that school um, from time to time, and I'm very impressed by the kind of middle school it is, and how uh, at that time, I, I guess when my granddaughter was there, you had those 1,200 students, mm -hmm. and I just was in awe of how are they functioning, you know, how, you know, and the team effort, and it ran like, like a well-oiled machine, and the students were happy, and they mm -hmm. liked, one thing I really liked, they liked each other. Right. You know, it was like a big family, and everyone knew each other, and they knew each other all over Windsor, you know, you'd go someplace, and they'd say hi, and, you know, hi to my granddaughter, and, and so I just think it's wonderful. Thank you. I really do. Thank you. I think you're doing a great job. Um, I'd like for you, if you have any other innovations that you'd like to talk about on this Spotlight Show, uh, you would definitely be welcome to come back. And maybe one day we can take the camera and go in there and look if it's okay. Absolutely. And what you're doing, because I think it's a, a very wonderful place to be. And I think, frankly, different parts of the country should see what you're doing in that school. That's how impressed I am by it. So um, I would like to thank you for coming on my show and uh, just tell you you're welcome anytime. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. I enjoyed uh, our conversation. Yeah. Um, 
I gotta try to remember what Paul Cavallari said. He said, the road to success is always under construction, am yes, I right? Yes, ma'am. And this is very evident at Sage Park Middle School. And I hope all of you are going to be enjoying your holidays, and I'd like to wish you uh, happy holidays and a successful and eventful new year. We have a lot of things to look forward to in 2012. And this is Barbara Ragland saying, until next time, be good to yourself and others. Thanks for coming. Thank you.